Excuse me. Okay, good morning and welcome to Sunday Story Hour, where we share real life stories of how human design has helped people to tell a richer, more true story of who they really are. I'm Kathy Bachanko, and my guest today is my friend Angela Perez. And Angela is a 3 5 mental projector. And I met her at a human design immersion in Asheville and learned that she lives not far from where my daughter lives in Florida. So we have become fast friends. And she's my dancing buddy when I go down to St. Petersburg. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to hear Angela's story because it's just so pure. It's just so like, you know, like she just blew my mind with her ability to wait and the way I've been able to witness her life just really blossoming as she's been waiting for invitations that really value her has been great. So um, Angela, if you want to say hi and maybe tell us a little bit about how you found human design, maybe the beginnings of your stories, that would be great. Welcome. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, this feels like fun. So, oh, uh, yay. <laughs> um, so I met human design back in uh, 2018. Uh, I had just turned 40 years old. And um, I met human design at a time where I was getting to a point of um, where is my life going? You know, that that 40 threshold that we go through and we start asking questions. And evidently I was um, in some wrong relationships and doing some things that um, didn't make me happy. So I was already searching um, so I did a lot of astrological charts and retreats and, you know, just trying to find answers to whatever, you know, that longing we have inside of us is. Um, and then I found human design at the end of that year that I was doing all, all of this uh, searching. And uh, what I remember about human design was, and I just got an email, actually, I didn't look for it. I just happened to get an email that said human design and I looked at it and the moment that I found out that I was a mental projector, everything made sense. Um, I do recall previously, like many years ago, thinking to myself, I just can't make a decision. I cannot make a decision about something that I don't, I'm not, I can't weigh myself this way or that way. Like I always knew that I had difficulties making decisions. I always knew that. And uh, also always very being, very mentally strong. So I identify that within myself. Um, of course, the big shocker is that you're told to wait. So apparently you've been doing all your life wrong so far. And, and so um, it was a big shock into what, what does this mean for me? Um, and I did read some, uh, of course, I'm a mental projector, uh, meaning that I don't have a lot to um, a lot of energy that is defined is more so there's this great deal of openness, uh, which is going to act like a moth to a flame going into my mind and, and, and just picking up things that are not me. Um, and, and so it took me a little bit of time to have that understanding within my consciousness and, and, um, I read a lot about the projectors needing to study, to understand themselves and to have that knowledge help us along, along the way. Um, but for me, it was different because knowing how strong my mind is, um, just knowing that if I went and dove into the study, I would be always thinking or always having that stuff in the back of my mind and I, I didn't want my mind to have the opportunity to drive my experience in my experiment. So I decided not to study I, from the get-go. I did, go ahead. I'm just, um, for those watching, can you explain? Because when we hear the term mental projector, a lot of people think, oh, you're defined in the mind. So your mind is your authority, but okay. nobody's, uh, nobody's mind is their authority, right? We know that in human design. So um was there a little bit of confusion with that for you or did that make sense right away? No, no, it, I needed time, definitely. Yeah. Just to yeah. think about things and you leave it alone and then you come back to it. And But but once your consciousness is hit with 
not supposed to move, then there's always something or there was always something telling me or making me accountable of how do I become more of servant of this? How do I stop to be able to see those things? Um, and, and so the mental projector, yes, is, is not mental authority. Um, I, I basically have a lot of energy in my mind, uh, which I can use for different things, you know, like intentional or things like that. If I think of something, then, then I can make it come by <laughs> or, or things like that. But, um, but not, not getting, okay, so let, let me just say what I said earlier, because we, I'm, I'm so open or we are so open, regardless, regardless of how well we're operating, what we're observing is not us. So, so to me, that was the, the biggest understanding of, okay, so if I'm operating based on other people's aura or even the transits, then I'm not going to be worried about what those transits are. I'm just going to know that that's not me and I'm going to come into myself and soften and stop and trying to see what it is that life is inviting me into rather than my mind picking from all the open centers, making me think things that are, are just there, but are not for me to engage with. Yeah. So, um, yeah, my, my uh, as my teacher has uh, told me, is, is environmental authority. Um, so it, it, mm -hmm. it is more so who I am around, the place that I am around, you know, my, my environment is valid. So I need to be um, around openness. Everything has to flow. Um, and for me, being in flow is what keeps me grounded. So that has been the whole uh, experiment for me from uh, just pushing away the mind or, or like, okay, you're there and it's all great, but it, it's just what's happening, not getting attached to it, not getting hooked on it or, or holding on to those things. Um, but but ca kind of like getting myself into that flow, which now my life feels like that. Uh, and it's more about uh, what are those things that are worth holding on to? And what are those things that are I just need to let go off. I think I, maybe I got sidetracked a little bit, but <laughs> that's okay. But you know, when I met you in what was it, 2021, I think was when I met you. And I remembered um, just thinking, wow, it's just so cool to watch how you um, were just so like you were waiting, but you were um, living and you were like, just like, cool, like in this cool place of observation that I just had so much uh, admiration for. And then I'll, like, I talked to you and you'd be like this, oh my God, this thing happened. And so let's go back to, um, I know you've told me about, you know, um, some of these stories, but let's go back to when you um, first found human design and you're th you're having all these things and you're coming to be with us. What were you doing at the time and what changed? Like what was, what was the biggest change? I know you talked about your first correct invitation. You said to me, maybe, I don't know how long after finding human design that all happened. So sure. sure. So yeah, that was 2018 and I was working. Um, I've been in corporate. I'm still in corporate. Um, I've worked on process improvement type uh, like jobs or implementations, things like that. Um, and I've been very grateful to, to have been invited into to doing these jobs where where I'm kind of free to point out the things that are not working. That's kind of my forte and, and, and uh, just using that guidance and, and it's worked perfectly for me. Um, so I was working at a job where I really wasn't that busy. I already had a pretty sweet deal. Um, and it was the year of COVID, it was 2019. And I got correctly invited out of my job. Uh, by that, I mean, I got uh, notice, I got some months of notice, uh, I got some severance, and actually they asked me to figure out how to um, automate what I was doing, <laughs> and I was given the budget, and I was given the time, and I sort of did it, so I kind of like worked myself out of that 
job and, and walked out, um, it was a really, really good way for me to leave that company and, and be in good standings with everybody. Um, yeah. A lot of people would have been very resentful of that request. Did you not feel any kind of bitterness? Like, really, you want me to, uh, you know, I understand, but you know what I'm saying? A lot of people would have gotten in their head and said, yes, you so need to make my job obsolete. And then you're just going to, and so, but and I just think that's so cool that you embraced it, did such an excellent job. And then later in the story, we'll hear how all that so, worked. So you know, <laughs> back to that moment, because I remember, oh, Angela, you know, you're being let go and all of that. And it was like, Whoa, right. Um, but I had I had a trust. I had it, it felt correct. The, the circumstances were correct. I was it was a high paying job. I mean, it was it was a no brainer for me. And, and you know, business, nothing is personal. Um, and, and I'm already at that point where I, I, I'm able to come into something or break with something, you know, three, five is my profile. So I'm okay with breaking bonds. Uh, mm -hmm. What I did know really, really in, in the center of my consciousness was this is the time for me to walk my talk. Everything mm -hmm. that I've been saying about, you know, uh, when we're looking for healing, doing the right things for us. And it was the time for me to really wait and learn how to wait and exercise that waiting so I knew that I was going to take time for myself I was being handed over the perfect circumstances for me to stop um, so I decided I was going to take a year off and I took a sabbatical and um, I mean imagine you being at home a year <laughs> Uh, I live with my son, so he will go to the school and, and you know, all, all I had to do was take care of myself and take care of him. So I did nothing. I will sleep until I woke up and did yoga or got in the pool or, you know, whatever. But um, allowing myself to have that time really, really helped my body to stop. And to really, really think about, you know, what what is waiting mean? Um, how do I continue to be triggered into initiating, uh, dealing with boredom? Uh, what is my end goal? Uh, what did I want to do with my life? Just so many things that I was able to um, just marinate on, right? And um, so a year went by, and I was having the time of my life. But then I knew that life was coming right? Because you have to make a living. Uh, so I kind of like knew that at some point, my my mortgage that was in forbearance was stopping, right? So I, and I needed to figure out how the heck am I going to continue living? And I remember clearly that two months before I needed to go and start work, like I needed to start making money. Um, I got a call from a uh, lady that used to be my boss in some previous lifetime. And she had a relationship with a startup company uh, that had to do with the business that I'm in. And anyway, my name was said and, and this and that. Next thing I know, I get a call from the CEO of this, this new company saying, you know, we want you come over, let's talk. I come over to talk. They already have the contract drafted um salary making a lot of money um things are sort of unknown because it's a start com startup company so there's not a lot of work already for me to do but more so like come in and help us see where we're going um it's been a year and a half since I've been at that job and uh Kathy if I work two hours a day it's too much that's, <laughs> that's the job that I'm in right now I work from home and uh, hopefully nobody <laughs> my job sees it. But if I work two hours a day, really, I work too much that day. Yeah, it's, it feels sweet. It's great. It's great. Um, I did go through a great deal of uh, worthiness issues because when you're used to generating, being productive, you know, needing something, needing to fulfill something to feel uh, that you offer value or that, you know, getting over that was a little bit difficult for me uh, to be like, you're worth it. Even, even if you're, if, even if you're going to be on a call one day a week, you're going to say something that's going to be of value. 
and it's not of your business to figure out what that is, right? It's just, you know, I'm here. It's, it's, the invitation is there. It continues to be correct. Um, and I, I, but I do remember like through my meetings, I would put a little note in my computer, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get wallpaper that says that. Like put it in my whole house. And and uh and and it's a little thrilling to to go through your professional life really holding yourself to that that expectation of I'm not gonna say anything. I am not going to say anything because I have no business saying anything. And I have seen when when I have spoken. Like at the beginning of the call, sometimes there's a problem and I have spoken with the solution. I'm telling you, this is the solution, right? The paragraph or the phrase or whatever. Nobody hears it. Right. Nobody right. hears it. And it's happened to me a million times. Every time I do it, it happens. So it's like on the job experimentation as well. Right. Um, so how does it work when it does work? How, how, what do you do when they do hear you? You wait until they specifically say, Angela, what do you think? I wait. I wait. Everybody goes. And then I wait until somebody says, Angela, do you have something? Sometimes I no, I really don't have anything this week. <laughs> right? Sometimes I, I do have something to say, but I do absolutely wait to be asked. And that seems to work really, really well. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> that was my second invitation um, that was big that like, whoa, you know, these really happen. Life really is delivering. Like life has an envelope with my name on it here. You're going to be paid for what you have to offer. So that was like, whoa. <laughs> Away from this invitation. I just want to clarify because you've told me enough stories that you are very valued, not just paid, but very valued in your job. And your input is very respected and recognized so even though you're saying you only work a couple hours a week it's because that's all you need to do right because they're like Angela and then you're like here and they're like okay they're great perfect yeah yeah it's kind of like um I don't know I think I heard something about me waiting for other people to catch up that's what my life is about and I have to master patience so it's kind of like I see, I see everything. How come do you, you don't see it? Are you kidding me? And, right. and sometimes it takes six months for a project to go on to get to the point that I'm already out there. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. <laughs> yeah. it's, uh, it, it works out. It works out. And okay, um, okay. so that was uh, the second big invitation. And then um, I've been single. Um, I had made really bad bonds during my life. Uh, oh, I did want to mention that though, that um, when I was talking about walking the talk and all of that, um, going really through the conditioning, because now I had the time to do nothing and just focus on what is life handing me? What is, what am I feeling? Um, I lost my train of thought. I lost my train of thought. Oh, I was talking. I I wanted to mention about the the bonds and and being responsible and accountable for cleaning up what's around you. You know, my house, making it prettier. Um, the friends that I have, the the partner that I had, um, and it it took me it took me. It took me about a year to get rid of a couple of relationships that I was in, a friendship, and then I had a boyfriend. Um, I was so hooked. I was so hooked. And, and like my girlfriend, she will continue to call me and I'll be like, but I'm her only friend. What is she going to do? You know, like having all of these um, mind games telling you, trying to justify, oh, I need to be a good person or this or that. So um, I was able to, you know, Put that aside, have the hard conversations and really stick to to my plan or, you know, I'm going to break this bond because it's bad for me and I'm going to break it and break it and break it, and even though I had tried to break it in the past. But for what I of, for those of you who don't know what she's talking about as a third line, one of the things that's a, a tenant of that is the idea of bonds made and broken that the third line learns through experience. So they enter into relationship and then when something's not working, they pull back. And they settle and then they might come back and say, okay, I understand what didn't work. 
and maybe they'll re-enter that relationship and maybe they won't. But the, but if the person keeps trying to hold them into that relationship and they can't make that break of the bond in order to really understand it, then you're going to just drive that person away. So with the three, five, especially, yes, for the like the or three, five or three, six, the personality even more so it might be a little different in the body of the one, three, but Mm -hmm. anyway, go on. So um, then what I discover is that um, anytime I broke a bond, seriously, you know, this is what I'm doing. Within a week, something happened. Or, or it was eminent that my life took a shift or felt different because I had let go of that. So it was like if I was being pulled. Um, so th there's something about the uh, the three five that it says all ends are beginnings. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's how it works. So um, again, I, I, I was single for a long time. And um, January of this year, I was out at a bar. I don't do dating apps or ask anybody to introduce me to anybody or go anywhere. I just happened to be at a bar with my neighbor that happened to invite me out that day. And, and I met this man. And I, I'm sitting there and the moment I see him looking at me, it was just like, you know, when someone is kind of infatuated or looking at something light or I, I don't know, it was, it was, it was something. Uh, so this person is now someone I am in a relationship with. It has been the most incredible recognition I have felt uh, at that level in my life. Is the first time that I walked into a relationship, and I think it's because it was so correct from the beginning, um, that I'm being completely, completely myself. I haven't said a lie. I, I, you know, I don't have this need to 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 prove something or to this other persona, and 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 this is a manifesto generator actually. And he's an emotional 50, manifesting generator. An emotional manifesto generator. And he is 55 years old. So he's older than me off the roof. Um, and what is clear to me is that I'm ready for this relationship. Uh, it came in correctly. I am continuing to seek that recognition or that uh, invitation as we continue the relationship. Uh, and it is still there. Um, the, the fun thing is that he says things to me like, you know, the day I met you, it was like, I couldn't see anything else. It was like this, this um, radiant light and I couldn't take my eyes off of you. So he says things sometimes that I'm like, yeah, you're reading my aura. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really cool for experimentation as well, because uh, sometimes we do have conversations and sometimes I actually don't say a word. And I don't know if I smile or I laugh or it's my body language or, or what, but then the conversation goes on. And then I realize, but I haven't said a word yet. He's picking up whatever it is that's there. Um, so it's been really, really rewarding to, uh, to live in a relationship that's uh, grounded and conscious and clear. And we talk. Uh, know that it has been really difficult for me to uh, learn about being with somebody that's so emotional. I have not been around someone so emotional in my life. And, and you know, I am totally open on my solar plexus and my willpower center. So I'm here to, that's my PhD on this life. I came to master that material plane. Um, and learn about emotions and relationships and uh, and how do how do we um, express those emotions and those feelings uh, it, 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 that's that's another big part I think that I'm getting to now with with this uh, with this relationship is making me look at people's feelings where they come from why um, and 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 seeing this person that is so emotional when when something happens and there's an outburst of emotion, we still talk rationally, and in his mind and in my mind, we know why this is happening. Yet the emotions are totally out of control, right? Like no, no nobody can control. They're out there. So 
um, that makes me feel a certain way when those emotions are really strong. Uh, mm -hmm. so that has been a learning experience for me because, uh, of course, we amplify, but we're not going to amplify exactly what the other person is. There will be a level of distortion. Right. Um, Good point. Yes. It's distort so it's still not me. Because your mind makes a story up with Correct. what you're amplifying, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, so that's been really interesting. And also the fact that I am... Uh, learning to identify what I'm feeling and what is what is coming from me. So those are my own emotions. And what I'm finding is that uh, they come from a deeper place. Um, th that is really, really me. And it, there, it's, it's not a lot, it's not often, but um, just by being with this person, I'm learning to I'm learning about feelings and emotions and, and how funny it is that I'm, I'm here to learn that in this life. And then this person that is so defined in those same areas has been presented to me. So it's like life is showing me what I need to learn or, or uh, helping me to decondition in, in some areas that I needed to. So that, that's been really, really fun too. Yeah, it's been really cool being your friend through all this and um, the times where you'll just be reflecting on something and talking to me about it and um, this level of awareness that you have that, okay, this is this part is hard, but I'm excited about what it's teaching me. And that's been really beautiful. And I still remember um, one time um, you were considering whether or not to take a human design course, but like you said, you didn't really... Um, want to get deep in the minutia so that you were in your brain. So you already had not really done some of the stuff for one course and you'd gotten a personal invitation from somebody to continue on this journey and you needed to make a decision. And so you said, so can I just kind of process with you? And you talked about it. And I think I might've asked you two questions and then you went, okay, I'm good. I'm done. And it was so like neat and come, you were like, I know, I know what to do. And I was just like, wow, that was so cool, you know, because it was just you like bouncing it off my energy or something in this way that was so beautiful to really witness it done in such an aware way. You know, I think I've had people do it not knowing what they're doing, or I've tried to coach someone through doing it when they didn't know how to do it. But that was so, um, that was really a profound experience for me. You know what I'm talking about, right? With the, Yeah, so I, yeah. I, I yeah. called you up and I said, I I had done living living your design course. I did do that. And then I did the rave ABCs. And then I, you know, I was looking into continuing really, really diving into it. And I called you and we had a quick talk. And I was just trying to see. I remember clear that I, I wanted to figure out if I was feeling left out. <laughs> if, if, FOMO, right? Yeah, it was it was totally FOMO. It and and it wasn't a matter of do I want to study this or not because the language is so rich and so wonderful, right? But it's a, it was a matter of is this correct for me right now? Yeah. And it wasn't. I just really didn't have the energy. I didn't care. I didn't, you know, whatever right. whatever is presenting, I just feel like um, by me really focusing on waiting in my body and learning to wait, right? Um, the body is changing because you don't react like, like, you know, I don't react like I used to. Um, my mind used to be, you know, all the time, all the time, all the time. Now, not at all. Uh, I actually watch the quality of my thoughts changing. Um, or even I will think and talk. Basically, my thinking process, I just, is out loud, um, which is I probably just, I know that that's my authority to soundboard. So maybe I'm just getting like in my mind, you know, just talk it out and see what comes out. Um, so I feel more comfortable with the waiting now. I feel more empowered by it, by having the ability to be present, more and more present than ever in my life. And, and by you being present, you have the ability to observe when your mind is jumping. Um, I do remember uh, consciously observing myself having some really bad thoughts sometimes, 
uh, judging people, uh, you, you know, just whatever bothers you. And then you're immediately, uh, I do remember when that started happening, I will hear the thought in my head and then I will be like, did I just think that? Like, what was that? Mm-hmm. Who the yeah. the heck are you? You right. know? Um, so yeah, I, I recognize that by way of me pausing myself, uh, even some practices, yoga, breathing, but always just having that consciousness of how can I be softer? How can I stop? Um, it is it, just work. It is just work because I, I, it doesn't jump at me that much. And, and it's, it's just a process of, of, of letting time go. I don't see how anybody at the beginning of uh, the experiment, especially for a pro, uh, for a projector, can go radically about the experiment because you're still going a thousand miles an hour when they tell you that you need to wait, and then you have to slowly come to a stop. You know that's the first thing, and then how do you prevent yourself from going through life uh, because you feel like you're missing something or you need to do something as opposed to do I really want to do that thing or you know this person is inviting me I don't have to pay anything they want my energy da, da, da. It's, it's a no-brainer I'm gonna go at least I'm invited it's going to be correct to a point because I'm invited and there's a 50-50 chance I'm going to get um what I need out of this exchange right because if you're invited then it's going to be great or not. And even if it's not, you're going to learn something about it. Right. Especially as a third line, right? Because you learn more sometimes as a third line from what doesn't work than what does. So right. it's a win-win for you, right? It is. It is. And just, I want to back up a little bit for anybody who's watching, who doesn't understand. Um, mental projector means you have, you can have any two uh, or three of these three centers defined. So it's the head, the ajna, and the throat are the ones that can be defined. So um, Angela has the head and the ajna defined, but they don't, she doesn't have a defined throat. Um, Someone with a defined throat can have just the ajna defined, or they can have all three defined. And then they would have to have two channels. So Angela has one channel and um, it's the 6447. But it's uh, half conscious, half unconscious. Yeah. Okay. And I have the 64. So um, I just have the confusion. (laughs) Um, And um, so, and mental projectors are super, super rare. They're rarer than reflectors. Now they're not a whole type. They're just a subtype, but it's rarer than um, being a reflector is. And a lot of people who are mental projectors think, oh, I have all this openness. I'm almost like a reflector, but a reflector has a different quality to their aura where they can take in all this energy, but there's like a Teflon-ness to their aura because there's no definition in it at all. So it does not, it doesn't stick. It just reflects back. Whereas a mental projector like Angela um, still has that ability for all those centers to take things in, absorb it and amplify it in a way that can really mess you up if you're not aware, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, that's been a tricky part for me um, because I'm a reflector on the black and I'm a reflector on the red. So I think I'm a reflector in that case. Um, Although my environment... I want to just clarify because some people might not know what you mean. So if you took either one of her sides separately, the black lines or the red lines, they de- neither one would define anything. It's, you'd have one of each channel um, gates to make a channel. So, you know, her body feels like this and her personality feels like this. And both of those are feeling like a reflector. So, yeah, yeah. Which I did more the confusion of what the heck is, how do I operate again? Um, and, and, and so, it, which makes me think or, or, or say now that, you know, even, even though we read what we are or the words are out there describing what we are, it doesn't register right away. You have to marinate on these things and like how, how you know, how do you embody it? How do you feel it? And uh, until it does. Um, 
So what you just explained about the openness and, and with the reflector, uh, at the end of the day, there's, there's so much there to act upon that is not you. So whether you're a reflector or a projector or a whatever, whatever, or if you're a defined person, I haven't really studied a lot of people that are defined. I've just focused on me. What I wanted to say, though, is that regardless of the definition that we have or what we don't have, we, we have other people, we have the environment, we have the neutrino, right? Like today, we're all lit up. Um, yeah. Not us, regardless, whatever is is flowing through our body or cells or whatever, more than likely is not us, right? It's, 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 it's there acting in, in response to something or uh, bringing a theme of something, but it's not us. Um, and, and so for me, conceptually, that has been the biggest thing of, I'm not gonna worry about what's happening, what's coming through the transit, this person, whatever. I'm going to focus on Am I supposed to be here? Am I supposed to be with this person? Am I supposed to say something? So like more aware of like, let's say I go to a party. I'm not going to talk to anybody. And if somebody, if there's a little interaction with anybody, my question is always going to be, do they see me? Do they see me? Do they see me? Do you see me? Do you see me? No. And if nobody sees me, I have no business interacting with anybody. Um, right. Because only then who I am will be, coming out in an interaction so um I hope I hope I'm explaining myself. <laughs> yeah I want to back up on a couple of points though okay first of all somebody had said something about transits and I think it's fair to say that because you don't really follow the transits that you know but Monica um said did the recent this is when we were talking about bonds made and, and broken initially oh. and stuff. did the recent transits of the nodes inverted give some light um, of what you are talking about, the 2738 or 2728. And that's, you know, 28 is, um, I don't know if you have either of those gates. Let me see. I don't know. You have the 28 and the 27 already. So um, defined, but um, the 27 is your south node on the personality side. And um, and I and the 28 is your, you have that just defined by both your Uranus gates. So um but still the layering on effect. But I think that, you know, like you said, um, not focusing on them and just remembering that, yeah, I feel this way and it doesn't really matter why I feel this way, whether it's someone in my aura or the transits or whatever, I know who I am and coming exactly. back to what is consistent about you. But I will say that your um, hanging gates, especially, you know, on centers like you have this open G center and you have the hanging gate too is your only um, gate on that. And it's unconscious and gate two is the most receptive gate in the chart. So I love how your identity right now really has become so entwined with your ability to receive. It just really makes so much beautiful mm -hmm. sense with the, you know, how you're doing things. And what is your two define it? Oh, that's your, oh, that's your um, design Saturn. I'm sorry, design Jupiter. So that's the blessings of Jupiter, right? So um yeah, so there's there's little nuances in there, but you know, I don't want to get too into that because I know that, you know, and I think that's one of the things that's made me so excited about having you on is that you are so um I don't, I'm trying to think the word I'm thinking of is pure in your experiment because you have all this mental definition that would make it so easy for you to be so in your head but you have completely resisted that. And you're like, no, I'm just gonna feel it and see what happens and reflect on it, you know, and this, you know, the the I, Robin Wynn, when I talked to her the other, a couple of weeks ago, she used, she uses the expression, the witnessing observer. And I feel like that's such a great exp expression. And it really feels like what you've been doing is like, look at this, see what happened here, see and see how this worked, see how this didn't work. And that's just such a, it's just such a beautiful version of the experiment. And um, one of the things you mentioned is that, you know, you're the only person so far that I've had on that has not been like training and doing all this deep stuff. And you did take some courses, but they were about your own personal learning, not about teaching it or doing anything with it as a business. Um, but I think it, in a lot of ways, you're the most pure 
um, and everybody's experiment is pure for them. It's, it is what it's supposed to be. But the way that you've been able to just really witness and observe what's happening in your life and then say, ah, look at that. That worked great. Oh, no, I didn't like that, right? Um, so, yeah, I feel really like I. it's been very um, educational for me to observe you as well. Although we're so different because here I am a projector and I've got so much definition that I often forget that I'm supposed to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you um, remind me of it. You're Angela's yeah, I, I just, has I, told me, you talk a lot. And I'm like, I know, but I, <laughs> I just feel like, um, um, I, I mean, human design is a tool just like of course, it's more accurate. And for somebody, brain is fun, right? Because, ooh, I want to know the unknown. Let's find out. Yeah. Um, but there's all kinds of other <clears throat> modalities or things that people can do to arrive at that presence, right? Uh, the, the gift of human design is that it tells you who you are and, and how you act better, how your mechanics work. Um, but, but the other thing that I've learned to, um, you know, with this trusting and, and this surrender, obviously, is hard. It doesn't come quick. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, life is not that serious. And and so we, we, we just hold ourselves to this expectation of, I don't know what, or there's going to be a pot of gold at the end or something like that. No. No, I mean, it could be boring, you know, once once you're in alignment, you're just kind of waiting and seeing what happened, what's going to happen, what life is going to bring to you. And it could be years. So it could get boring, but there, there's beauty in that in that state of settle, being settled and, and like, you know, I'm not supposed to move anywhere in this trajectory in the universe that I'm going as we're flying. Um I'm I'm not unless unless I'm supposed to be there. And if I'm supposed to be there, it's because if there's a lesson for me to be learned or there's a gift for me of of sweetness. So yeah. um what one of the other things that um just came in my memory is like when you were talking about the whole experience with your getting this wonderful presentation of a job offer that just kind of came from your network that you were not giving any attention to, right? Like we forget right. that. Even if people aren't in our presence, that worse, our aura is still drawing people to us when things are correct. But when you first, you know, that was the thing when COVID had said, okay, you don't have to pay your mortgage right now, right? And then you were getting to where you had to do it. And yes. you were like, I have no job right now. And COVID had happened and all that stuff. And and um, then you had a friend who just invited you to clean some houses with her or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, so little things, little things have also come in to help out. Um, but those, I don't, I, those were not as correct. But well, I, feel like I bring if it up. you need something, something, right. yeah, is going That's to. That's my it. point: is you needed something in the interim, and you never said, "Oh, this is what I'm going to do from now on." But you also said, "I need money," and this person knows me, invited me, and this feels like it will. And you were doing that. When the invitation came in for this job, right? Isn't that what you? Yeah, yeah. That? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, at no moment, I mean, I never really reached out. Yeah. People knew that I wasn't working. Um, yeah, but I, I didn't. I wouldn't. I, I would like think about you know this person is now with that person in that company. This and that. Like I would kind of put things together, and some of those things that I was trying to put together in my head actually came through. Um, so I don't know if I called it or or what happened, uh, but it was um, it was something I thought about a lot also because um, I'm a three five, and yet this opportunity came sort of through my network. So is there a resonance to a fourth line that is in my design there somewhere? You know, I the, where where that sits. Um, well, your um, your your personality moon and your design moon are both in the fourth line. So you're driven by gate nineteen point four, which nineteen is um, you know, very sensitive. Okay, um, 
and and so there's this drive that's in the fourth line and then the um 47.4 is your design moon so both and that's what draws people to you so that's really there plus your remember i was saying how you have the hanging gate too on your g center which is the most receptive gate and that's in line four so mm -hmm. and the gate two is where the magnetic monopole sits so when we are making decisions from a place of correctness when we're really using our um, strategy and authority, and most of all, recognizing our value, our worth, right? Which has been really coming through that you always knew, no matter any of this was happening, you never said, poor me. And you never said, um, I'm just not good enough. This isn't gonna, you know, that how you speak about yourself is very important in that whole scenario of recognizing with using your strategy and authority and your, you're um, calibrating that magnetic monopole the whole time by doing those things correctly. And then it draws the right things to you that you're receptive to. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah what you're saying. Yes. Cause sometimes I do put things out in the air. Now um, I did notice there's a comment from Lynn who, you know, we have a varying degrees of um, experience in this group too. So Lynn wants to know, is that specific to, to type or all types to weight? And um, Lynn, if you are almost any type is meant to wait, the manifester is here to initiate, but even the manifester needs to um, initiate when they get the divine inspiration to do so. So if they're just initiating from a place of their mind, that's not correct either. So we all have um, the need to wait and not initiate from a place of low self-worth, fear, um, or just monkey mind nonsense of or conditioning that everybody says, you know, when we're initiating from this place that says, well, if I don't do this, what will people think? Or if I, um, I need to do this so that so and so is not angry. All those things um, are are incorrect. So, did you have anything you want to add to that? No, I, I completely resonates. Yeah. Okay. So we've got about 10 minutes here before this ends and I'm really um, enjoying it. And I just want to remind anybody who's watching, who, if you want to ask any other questions, put it in the comments. And also if there's any um, buddy who watches this in the replay, we will go back later and um, look at those as well. But if there's any questions anybody has right now and um I will say, yeah, I'm they, my cup here. I have to give credit. Angela bought me this cup one time when we were down in Tampa. So um, she lives in Tampa and my daughter lives in St. Petersburg, which is just across the bridge from each other. So um, my daughter's 22 and oftentimes I'll go down there and stay with her and she um, will either need me to leave her alone or I will need to leave her alone. And Angela is always the my um, fun partner to get together and we go out to dinner or dancing or just walk around. And so I really um, appreciate that. And it's fun to walk around and um, have a really fun time and still talk a little bit about human design at the same time. So for us projectors, the, the value of having a projector in our life is invaluable. It's invaluable. Absolutely. Yes. Be able to talk with someone about everything else or just even your perception of how you see things. It's just amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I really value our um, our friendship as it's been developing over the years. It's um, it's really good. So um, so now um, let's see. We talked about the oh, we talked about the third line and the bonds made to broken. But you haven't mentioned anything about how you feel being a fifth line. You having that fifth Ooh. line heretic savior. Um, how does yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. The projection is there. Um, and and it, it just makes sense by way of just understanding how I have done things through my life. The three, five, I just go and do things. I just go at it. And then one needs to, and then I fix it you know, through my career. I am in process improvement. Um, that's what I ended up doing. I actually went to school back in Colombia for uh, fashion design. I'm a fashion designer. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that, that's another creative part that I would love to explore at some point as well. Um, uh, but um, 
the value or my value is my ability to see those things that other people don't see. Um, so I, I can recognize from the beginning of my career um, that has been it has been something that has allowed me or propelled me or, you know, and, and I feel like and don't I, I don't know if I'm wrong or not, but that comes from my 18. I have, I think, four or five number 18s in my design. Yeah, gate 18 is hanging off of the spleen and it's, um, I know you have it. I was looking at that too. So, so that, that means that I basically, I, I walk into a place and what I'm going to see is what's wrong, <laughs> uh, which is great for some things is really bad when you're in a relationship with an emotional manifestor <laughs> generator to be able to pinpoint all the mistakes right away. And but it is your Mercury. So you're, it is, um, Mercury is what we're here to communicate about. So um, it, your personality, Mercury is 18.4. So again, that's in um, network. But remember, uh, obviously anything for you is gonna be projected and it's not a full channel. So that needs to be asked for. Correct. So, okay. So. I'm sorry, I'm coming back to your initial question about the heretic. So because of that, I feel comfortable in life or my employer or whatever I'm doing. I feel comfortable and supported while I figure the thing out. So I'm going at it knowing that I don't need to get it right at the first time or that I'm going to fire and then like align or like, you know, uh, as as we go um and and with that comes the projection because it's like you know if anybody can do it it's gonna be her some some I have been told that before right that's um, the savior aspect right yeah yeah so so you have to have the invitation because if you have a correct invitation that invitation will allow for your process to move through until there's a solution or not, because maybe there isn't a solution and the solution is like, we can't continue to try to fix this thing. This is not uh, what, what needs to be happening. It, it should be this, or or at least let, let's don't continue wasting energy on this, but let's move this other way. So now that I'm saying it out loud, it's like if I'm helping others remove the fear or pass the fear of the whatever issue into, what's going to flow. Um, uh, so I, I will say the heretic, I, I see it there um, completely, but I think it's, or I feel it's supported by the invitation. If I, yeah. you know, I, I can't go anywhere and, and start telling them how to do things without, just, you know, I'd be fired right away, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, it, but yeah, it feels like a little bit of, responsibility and now I'm feeling something like in my stomach when I when I think about the projection and the for other people to to put that responsibility on you and and uh I, I think I'm okay because I'll do whatever I can the best that I can and if it doesn't work then this this thing wasn't for me right. um but it, it takes a very long time especially for someone that works in corporate to get to that point of you know this is a job they're I'm lending them my brain for eight hours a day and um, better use it, you know, and, and this is what my brain does. Um, and yeah, I, I think that that the the heretic probably mostly family related. I can see that um, fa um, or friends or yeah, I can see that uh, just people kind of looking at me for how do we solve this? Or she's the one that knows everything. My mom tells me that I know everything. Uh, and she also says that I don't have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> you have no feelings. You don't have a heart, oh. but you know everything. Uh, that's when she needs me to help her with her phone. She, have you done her chart? Um, my mom uh, was an orphan, so I don't have the time. I don't think that they- yes, she's emotionally, she's probably emotionally defined. You know, because we we always have that that um, thing that comes between us emotionally defined people and the open emotional people. And my husband is completely open solar plexus. My daughter has just the hanging gate forty nine, 
and I have uh, the 3955. So the, the solar plexus to the root individual channel, the channel of emoting. And I always feel like um, they don't, they're either not emotional at all, or they're a mess. <laughs> And they just think I'm a mess all the time. So, um, <laughs> or, but maybe in the past. So, okay. So we're about out of time. I did want to clarify just because Lynn was asking about waiting and I wanted to make sure that I finished that with, you know, you keep talking about the invitation because you and I are projectors and projectors are meant to wait for the invitation. And there are also specific channels that are considered projected energy. And that needs to be invited in that energy, no matter what your, um, design is you're not meant to um, offer up that energy without it being asked for. Um, but if you're 70% of the planet are generator types, and so that they are waiting to respond, they're waiting to see what life brings to them, and they respond with their sacral and then their emotional authority. So um, the last thing I just wanted to add was I know, even though you have not gotten, um, you say you have not gotten deep into the learning, you have invested a lot in understanding your human design. And how many readings would you say you have had over these eight, Ooh, six years? I've had, I would say about four, four yeah. or five readings. Yes. Right. right. So about four or five per, um, structured readings, not to mention you took the living your design course and, yeah. and all of our, you know, glass of wine readings, right? Where <laughs> we sit somewhere and talk about. I'm going to tell you different things, especially coming into something so foreign as a mental projector and what is this environmental authority or not authority and all of that. Um, so yeah, yeah. At the beginning, um, I, I had two, no, three. From the very beginning, I had three. And so I had different notes to compare and, and what different people we say about the same gates or overall. Um, but the very first reading that I had was with John Martin, you know, he just passed. And uh, what I do remember specifically was that when I found human design, I knew I needed to go to the right person. So I know I was guided to him somehow. And what I read about him was that he was going to not sugarcoat anything uh, and just, you know, to the point. And that's actually the, what he delivered in my in my reading. Um, it wasn't so much about uh, what how to wait or these lines or this or that. It's just you know what this means for you in your life. Um, and and what he told me was that I really didn't have anything to hold on to. So there's nothing in your design that you can, you have energy that is, um, how do you say it? Not sustainable. There's a uh, persistent that is always there. Yeah. Right. Oh, nothing. So, so it was like, Ooh, so I, I really got nothing. My mind has nothing like really my, there's no say in my life. What do you mean? I live my life using my mind to do anything like, so that was the bigger shocker. Um, so I, 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 find it valuable to have different readings and and, different different readings. and even as you go I recently two years ago I think I had one with Lavina I think I shared that with you and the amount of knowledge yeah. and and not not only that but now I'm able to hear those things mm -hmm. because I'm already alone my experiment I'm in year six so my body has allowed me to get to a point where I can really hear what's being said and applied and that really resonates with me. Yeah. So I, that's what I would say about the readings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we are 1201 my time. So that means um, we have reached our time limit, but I really, um, I just want to really thank you for doing this. I um, know this is a little out of your wheelhouse, but you have so much knowledge that I think sometimes you don't even um, realize how much this can be helpful for people. So Angela does not do any kind of human design work or anything at this point in time um, in her life. She is busy with her life at the pool and going out with her fabulous guy who <laughs> takes her everywhere and just living this awesome life that she has um, attracted into her, her um, aura. And, um, but if people want to reach out, they can Facebook messenger you. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Send a message and, you know, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer any questions. And, you know, every week we tell, we share stories here about how human design has helped people ch change their story. And it really is about telling a better story of who you are, who you came here to be, and it's your story. So if you're ready to rewrite your story and, you know, really get into where you are meant to be going um, and you'd like to work with me, you can reach out to me either through kathybashanko.com and just set up a discovery call or be happy to speak with you that way. Or you can also um, message me through Facebook as well, or I'm on Instagram also, but I'm not sure. I'm, I put these on YouTube later. So that's why I'm putting all that on there. Obviously, if you're watching this here in the intuitive human design group, you can just contact me here. And thanks again, Angela. And is there anything else that I forgot to put as far as people talking to you? Uh, no, no, I'm just um, I'm happy for the recognition. Thank you for the recognition. This is, I really enjoy this. And uh, yeah, I'm open if anybody feels like talking a little bit more, absolutely. And thank you for doing this. This is very helpful. Thank you. And there's a lot of thank yous in the, uh, in, from the comments. So, okay. All right. Bye everybody.